Hey everyone, Father Ron here. Thanks for joining me, breaking open the word, third Sunday of Easter. (laughs) And if you haven't already, pause this and read the gospel. I put the whole thing in the notes on the app um, or grab whatever you need to do to read the gospel first. I don't want to take the time here to do that. It's the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Now, after you've read it, before we begin, I want to go back three years when the disciples met Jesus for the first time and began to follow him. Now, in the Gospel of John, it says, at one point, it says, Andrew and another who would become a disciple, Andrew and another guy encountered Jesus as he walks by. And then at one point, Jesus turns when he sees that they're kind of looking and following him in a way. And Jesus says, what are you looking for? And Andrew and the other man asked him, teacher, where do you live? So they knew Jesus was somewhat special, but not quite did they understand the fullness of it. But they were taken enough to ask him a question. Where do you live? And Jesus says, come and see. Now, it says the time was about four o'clock in the afternoon. And so they stayed with Jesus the rest of that day. And here's the part I love in the gospel. The next day. The first thing Andrew did after they departed Jesus, the first thing Andrew did was ran, found his brother Simon and says, we have found the Messiah. (laughs) We have seen him. We know him. We ate with him. Oh my gosh, you imagine the joy that must have been in his heart. But and then, of course, Simon became a disciple as well. But what opened their eyes to Jesus? What was that, Andrew and this other man? And you know what it was? The invitation to come and see. That's what Jesus invited them to. Come nearer to me and you will see. Your eyes will indeed be open. And so they did. They dropped what their life was about at that moment, and they followed Jesus. And that is how they came to know him and love him. You notice Jesus does not say to them, stay where you are and see. Rather, come, move closer to me. And you will see. Spend more time with me and less about you, and you will know. Jesus invites them to step out of their worries and their concerns and their habits as he invites us, because we can't follow Jesus by staying where we are. Right? That was three years ago. Now, today's gospel, the road to Emmaus, three years later, these same disciples meet the resurrected Jesus, some of them, on the road to Emmaus, and they don't even know it's Jesus. (laughs) They have no idea who they're with. How can that be? It makes no sense, does it? Well, you know how it, how, how it, how it be? <laughs> For the same reasons, we don't always recognize or feel the presence of God close to us. Because we're too wrapped up in our own little world and dramas and concerns and wants that we don't see him. You know, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, as in today's gospel, 
You know, they were all about the crucifixion, the death of Jesus, wondering what was going to happen next. Andrew, what are you going to be doing? I don't know. I'm going to look for a job, I, you know, and on and on. Wondering what happened. And then Jesus joins them. And they keep talking about their own lives, living in their own world, in their own conspiracy theories. So Jesus starts giving them hints and clues to lead them towards understanding who he was right before them, but they still don't get it. <laughs> but then, what do they do that does move them into relationship with Jesus, that opens their hearts, their eyes to experience their hearts, it says, burning within them for the Lord? What changes it all on that road to Emmaus? They invite Jesus into their home. There is something in them, like in all of us, that's captured by and drawn to Jesus, but is thirsty for something more than just to know him. You know, that, that, that deeper connection that we all want. And so they do, the disciples, what is at the heart of all prayer and contemplation, they invite Jesus to their table, to the place where we are always fed and nourished. And just like three years earlier when they sat at table with Jesus in the home, once again now, their eyes were opened and their hearts could catch fire. <laughs> Gosh. Folks, two points I want to make today. We must also invite Jesus to our table if we want to tap that beauty, you know, if we want to tap the very source of all that is good and holy. We need to invite him in to spend time. How do we do that? To spend time in prayer and adoration on silent walks through the woods in praying the rosary and on and on. It's clear this is how we find the intimacy and that burning love within us. It doesn't just happen. You know this. The challenge of the spiritual life, I think, simply comes down to taking our attention off of ourselves and giving it to Jesus and him alone. Second point. It gives me a little comfort, I must admit, to know that like the disciples... It's easy to stray. That, you know, to get all wrapped up in my own issues and self-absorption is something even our greatest saints were challenged by. You know, I was looking back recently at some journal entries from over the years that I've written. I, I don't do it as much as I'd like, but anyway, I have years and years of kind of writings and I was looking at it and I could see this very dynamic play out over and over again. How, how at, at one point in my life, I'm reading it, you know, many years ago, I felt so close to Jesus and would make time every day, a lot of time, to be with him. You know, to read scripture, just to meditate. And I was just overwhelmed with his love in my life. <laughs> Truly, my heart was on fire. And in the journal entry, it's just kind of funny, on fire, exclamation point, exclamation point. <laughs> it was, wow. But then, I keep reading my journal. Six months later, 
I'm asking, where are you, Lord? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you know, I'm confessing my lack of time with him and letting myself become overwhelmed with all of my own stuff, you know, joys and challenges. The time that I used to spend with him, where I had all the exclamation points, I started reading, now I was giving it to watching this new thing called Netflix DVDs that you'd get through the mail. I was watching movies, you know, or having gotten into triathlons and marathons, I was spending a lot of time every day training for those things. So good stuff, no question. But, but where was the time I used to spend with Jesus that drew me deeper towards him? You know, and like any relationship, without that investment, it begins to fade and wither to the point where you're walking on the road of your life and Jesus is, is there, he's a companion, but you don't know him. And when I think about it, I kind of think a lot of people live their spiritual lives with Jesus as a companion on the road of their lives. You know, Jesus as friend, a, a passenger that can help them make, you know, help make the journey of life enjoyable and a little easier, for sure. Nothing wrong with that. But I don't know about you, friends, but I don't want Jesus to be just with me or beside me as a companion. I want Jesus to be my Lord and my God. You know, I so want my heart, like these disciples around that table with Jesus, to be aflamed with his love for me in my life. You know, commanding my full attention and desire. That's what I want. So friends, if you're like me and you want the same, then it's clear we meet Jesus at the table, right? That's how the disciples first met him. That's how they ended it. That's at the Last Supper. Everything is about the table. So let's get out the fine china and the linen tablecloths. Now let's pull out the good silver and the crystal glasses and let's do what the disciples did that burned their heart have dinner, an elegant and lovely dinner with Jesus. Fine dining at its best with candles, the harp playing in the background. That's where we're going to meet Jesus too. And I love the analogy of dining actually in the spiritual life where we meet Jesus because we have at our fingertips all the elements to make it truly special and meaningful. For instance, imagine the rosary as the crystal wine glass. You know, the small little daily prayers before meals at the beginning and end of every day that you might pray, that's our beautiful silverware. The God Minute, every day, that's the beautiful china plate that's placed before you. Meditation, quiet time in your life, that's the music playing in the background. Adoration before the Blessed Sacrament, that's the candles throwing a warm glow over everything. And all these small little things that by themselves don't create a fine dinner, but when brought together, a whole new beautiful reality happens. And then Eucharist, Mass, is that massive, gorgeous teak table upon which everything sits. 
Yeah, fine dining takes some preparation and time, but isn't it worth it? Now, yes, you can get by in life with eating frozen dinners and Chinese takeout and, and once in a while splurge by going to the Cheesecake Factory. And you can do that. And that's kind of like Jesus as a companion in your spiritual life. I mean, he's there, you know, the Chinese food, it works. You can get by, I suppose, better than nothing. But for those of us who want a different experience, let's tap some of those resources and eat well and come to know more fully Jesus as Lord, as God. And of course, if you're looking for opportunities to set your table, to invite Jesus, you know, just look at our app um, pantry. We have just a lot of opportunities of prayer, pray along prayers, adoration, virtual adoration, prayer ambiance, Father Michael's guided meditations. It just goes on and on. Anyway, great resource. So friends, that is our task these days, today. To ask yourself, do you want to know the Lord more? Do you want your heart to be on fire for God? Anyway, folks, thank you for being with me today. God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>